Okay, thanks for uh, thanks for happening along, and this will be a review of the DR Model XL800 Power Wagon. And yeah, if you didn't know, DR was purchased by Generac, great company. Everybody knows that name for generators. And uh, don't feel bad if you didn't know. I didn't know either, and I even have stock in Generac. <laughs> And again, yeah, it's a power wheelbarrow. Kind of an interesting story here to preface my remarks. I had a friend call me. Hey, can you come and help me? I got to get some lumber uh, from the street side uh, place where they're going to drop it off down on a riverbank. And it's going to be rather laborious. All right, you know, I didn't actually, actually look forward to it. But long story short, I did get over there. And his client pulled this machine out. And I looked at the thing and I thought, my God, what the hell is that? I've uh, never seen anything like that before. It's kind of a thing where if a guy goes by a hardware store and you saw something like this out in front, you'd have to stop and look at it because it sure garners a lot of attention, and that would be me, and very, very impressed. Anyway, we completed our task. His was 10 or 12 years old, his machine. Yeah, the uh, tilting ram and the, and the electric start. And in fact, the carburetor was all clouded up on it. I even got it to run a lot nicer for the guy, but... I thought to myself, man, I've got to look into one of these, so here I am. And yeah, in full disclosure, before I start here, my machine was reconditioned, and I did call DR and ask them what that meant, and their reply was, well, quite probably somebody bought one and just returned it for whatever the reason, but have a peace of mind, you're going to get a two-year warranty, and it'll meet or exceed all expectation. And that's all I needed to hear, so they deliver the thing, you saw, it was crated, and uh I have a lift here, and that allows me to look at things, and we can get right into the, right into the going ons here, and see yeah, the business end of the thing, and what's going on with the, with the uh, with the machine overall, and critique any maybe little criticisms that uh, somebody anal, I should suppose, and more full disclosure like uh, myself would be. I have, a, I have that high expectation, but I feel this machine can garner a return for me when I'm done with it, uh, especially aesthetically, if I take care of it and I can get my investment back, and that's a great peace of mind for me, and I think that's a good theme for the machine overall here. So I thought, whoa, right off the bat, what's going on here? Look at that exhaust, and it's pointing right at what I would learn a moment later was the brake cable to the transaxle. That's not very long-lived. So again, you know, okay, not a big deal, but uh, I've got to rearrange things a little bit. Look at that muffler, and there is a guard around it. There's nothing to, you know, nothing that's going to stop it, but, you know, it's kind of a timeout for me. So what I opted to do is I found some exhaust gas recirculating tubing. I'm a car mechanic, and uh, I popped that cable off, and I lined that, uh, put it, right through there to kind of, oh, I don't know, like a sheath, you know, around it. Because we can all agree, while you can adjust this and you can tip it up or down, that's going to be short-lived. And if you tip it down, then you'll turn your nice orange frame black. And if you tip it down a little further, you'll burn a hole through the tire. And if you tip it up, then you have all the nauseous gases. So anyway, I met, I met it in between. Easy thing to fix. Just took me a moment. Don't know what happened there. Don't know if they planned it that way. I doubt it. And, uh, yeah, overall impressions of the machine, you know, as we get into this a little bit, would dictate, nah, that probably wasn't the case. Maybe somebody fussed with that before, uh, before I got it. Don't know. But, again, easy to remedy. Anyway, I got the battery. They supply you with a wall wart, poked and charged. And, uh-oh, my power tilt doesn't work. And I found this. Oh, boy, this is what I like. So I popped this fuse holder off, and this is well planned. If you did overload that power ram for the tilting bed, there's it's fuse protected. And this little wire was pulled out of the holder. Oh, big deal. So I pulled it off and soldered it back up nice. Probably, I would imagine, when it was crated and recrated, uh, and it was uh, done so in a great manner, it, uh, it came, came apart. But yeah, overall impressions, wow. Look at the power coating here. The gauge of the steel is overdone, overblown. I love it. It's angry and stiff, very, very rigid. And all the fasteners are top grade. Uh, gee, they're at least grade three, could be grade five. I did order the two optional tool holders. 
There are, there's one on both sides. That way you can plop your shovel or your rake or whatever to take up the driveway or, again, out on the back 40, maybe around your pond, out on a nursery, whatever your need might, might be. And, yeah, you get a huge compartment. I should have known. I didn't look, but I don't know how many cubic feet it is, but it'll, you can put 800 pounds in there. And, again, very stout, quite well-designed. And then, don't you, this is a powder-coated back. You know, you take this off, and you can easily control and dump your load. And obviously, I'm trying to hold the phone here, and I can't, uh, can't re-index that, uh, that rear gate on the back of that cart. But you get the idea of what you do, and then you'll have that control. Uh, the other models have a manual lever where you can lift that. This is a power lever. So, yeah, after I got that corrected, I fixed, that, uh, I fixed this ram here. And it works just effortlessly. It is an electric motor. I don't know whether it drives a hydraulic ram or just a, a gear in the, in the business end of that. There's that phrase again. Uh, not quite sure. All I can tell you is that it works nice. It's smooth. It's aggressive, but not over-aggressive. All right. Now, here's kind of a, maybe a little bit of a downfall. Maybe for me, and I don't know. I mean, I've talked to guys at power equipment dealers, and they kind of frown on these differentials. This is something like maybe you'd see, and this is a three-speed forward, one reverse. I don't know, maybe in a Craftsman, perhaps a Ranch King tractor. And it is a sealed environment, a sealed sphere. You do not drain it. And when you read about it, it's non-serviceable. So what I should suppose is going on here is, is that there's a magnet in the case to pick up any particulate in the nature of it running. And again, it's a wheelbarrow. And I'm going to talk about that more in a minute. So um, anyway, onto the motor here. We're going kind of fast, and I'm just kind of critiquing things as I took this. This is the largest motor that they offer for this model, and I think there are three sizes. And again, yeah, there's that electric ram. But look at the, uh, the stoutness, if that's a word of the build here, and the frame and the welds. Very, very impressive. Yeah, there's that little tube I was talking about. But look at these heavy, angry casters. My gosh, that's darn near quarter-inch thick steel. Look at the big castle, the locking nylon castle nuts. Not sure if those bearings are open in those wheels and you're really pumping grease into the actual bearing. A lot of times they're sealed and you think you are, but you're not. But we'll take it. The fact they, they put a Zerk there works for me. And yeah, it sounds like you're pouring milk on your Rice Krispie cereal when you grease those kingpins. And look, maybe one or two times in the machine's life you'll ever do that. But the point of the remark being is that they care. It's on the other side there, that Zerk. They cared enough to you know pay attention to the little bit of detail. Again, look at the size of this hardware. Very, very rigid, very, very nicely done. Like the motor, good impression uh, thus far, started right up. And uh, again, all the iron work on the bridge and the tilting mechanism and so on. And there is a backup means of uh, if you lose your battery or you left something on, and I'm going to talk about that ironically. Yeah, you get a pull rope back here. Is it the most convenient thing? Yeah, maybe not. But then again, when are you ever going to use it? The point is, is it's a back door and a way out if you ever needed it and it's there. So big deal, you bend over. And yeah, I like to wick cables. These are very wickable. Look at them. They're really nice and adjustable. I like that they put a fuse on the ram. So if I did tilt that up, if it couldn't move or something, that I have that protection uh, amid an overload, which probably would never likely occur. But, you know, you never say never. And it's just coming down on the side of caution, and you'll always find reasoned engineering there. So again, here's this on-off switch, and what I opted to do here, there's a little hole, and I opted to just tie a pilot light and see if my ignition's on, and here's why. When you shut the machine off, you can shut it off with the throttle, and if you did that, you'd forget that you'd left the ignition on. See there, it's off. So in other words, if you turn the ignition on and start it, and then shut it off with the throttle, you could then walk away and you wouldn't have the light there to tell you that the ignition's on. Now, does that really matter? Well, it did to me. And, you know, I mean, there's the hole. There's a knockout for it. So I just opted to put a little pile lamp in, and that's what's going on there. Okay. Now, when I have my running oil or whenever I want to change my oil, I'm looking down here on the sump of the motor where it's mounted to this frame. And ironically, I can't believe this. 
They preface in the manual that, there, that there's a 3-8 socket plug underneath here in that very sump of that motor, but it's not. There's nothing there. You have to sucker it out the fill tube. And all right, I mean, even that's doable. I mean, stop the drama. It's not going to change the game, but come on. I mean, there's my mirror pointing in the direction that they say the plug is located uh, at. You never end a sentence with that. Anyway, I just did. <laughs> And it's not there. So, again, doable, but a little bit inconvenient, and I can't see why. Look, at I should suppose the motor fits a myriad of different applications. Hey, make us 100,000 of these, and you get a good price on them, and then they do it. And, yeah, there's that electric ram again. Very simple. Kiss, keep it simple, silly, and that's what it is. There's that tubing again. And you can see it better now that it's up to protect that, uh, that sleeve around that... Uh, that brake cable that I prefaced earlier, you know, just something that I felt I needed to do. They do again provide you with a spark arrestor, and look at these big, uh, look at these big knotty tires. And yeah, that spark arrestor could be for a very arid climate if you're scared of a backfire or maybe start something on fire in a dry setting. You needn't worry about that. I don't have that concern here. And after that's just good old common sense. So yeah, underneath. Here's that differential again, but look at this plate that runs underneath it. And now I'm going to talk about ground clearance. But man, before I do that, look at the bend on that plate. It's protected, the pulley's protected, the belt's protected, and oh man, is that thick and angry. Very rigid in the way that it's bolted up there, very well thought out. And somebody remarked when I looked at the reviews on these that he had bought one for his father and that it didn't have a lot of ground clearance. So yeah. That is maybe a little bit of an issue. You get about maybe between three and four inches, if I were to guess. I didn't actually measure it, but if you get this in the mud, yeah, it, uh, it wouldn't be a good thing. But why would you take such a nice machine in a mud hole? But again, life is messy. Life is busy. But I, again, want something in this diff to drain. Come on, what are you doing? Uh, you know, it should be my call. Why not, you know, and am I going to take it all apart just to drill a hole out and thread a hole for a drain? No, but I just wish that could be my choice and you put a little plug in there. Nobody probably will monkey with it anyway. Point of the remark being that it would be up to me whether or not I did that or not. Okay, and look it. Here's that fifth Zerk. Good job, DR. This is on the idler arm where you tip that uh, belt to engage or disengage the business end of that transmission. In other words, to, to get it in a dry position or to to just in an idling position or bypass position. And uh, that's very well thought out. It's a good power rated belt. And again, you know, motors aren't what they used to be. As a motor ages, so does its appetite for in fuel increase. There isn't a jet, there isn't a needle. There is a jet, what am I saying? There's not a needle you can fatten that fuel up with. And yeah, I talked about those grease cirques. So look, where I'm going with that remark is I, I would use rec fuel, maybe a little spill of seafoam. That motor's going to be happy for a good long time. Great electric start. Great overall impressions of the motor thus far. And again, uh, looking and critiquing the build, there's that brake wheel. So if you're on an incline and you're worried about your load, have the peace of mind knowing if you hit that brake handle, just like on a bike or something, you'll stop, and yeah, wow, is that uh, ever powder-coated and nice and, and really stout to protect that belt underneath there. You get a thumbs up with me on that, uh, on that one. Again, a good theme here, just overbuilt, this machine. Really nice. So yeah, in the end here, after, you know, and again, this is just me, I tidied up the cables a little bit with some zip ties. There were a couple running over or down the left uh, handlebar, and I decided that they'd be better off on this side and, you know, that sort of thing to get everything in a, arranged in a manner that I, that I like. And again, that I can wick oil down these holes uh, for, for those very cables and that everything's fused. It's ABC. It's simple. You get a couple keys with it. Look at these pivoting points for all these little levers and lock-ins. You can lubricate them. Wonderful, but you know, eh, it kind of gets in my craw here. Why not have a plug there? Gee, in the manual it says you need a 3 8 uh, uh, socket wrench, and there's a, a nice pipe plug right there waiting. 
And if I'm not mistaken, we're going to see that very picture in the manual. And the reason I preface this picture is, yeah, there's the manual, is they point at it and there it is right there and it's not. It's not anywhere I can see it unless uh, it's, a, it's a mistake and you have to actually take the motor off. Anyway, I got my mirror under there. I looked. It's not there. It's not happening. So, again, overall impressions are wonderful. You do get that control. You can tip that thing up. You can tip it down. And what I think I'm going to do myself personally when I'm, before all is said and done is get some diamond plate uh, and before I talk about that, yeah, this is a presence switch, which means simply you can't start the machine when it's in a gear range. Look at everybody's got a little sister, don't they? And her name is Sue. And you don't want to be sued. So it's just, again, common sense and smart written all over it. So, yeah, once you're, it senses your presence there, uh, then you can do that business. And, you know, it, it knows that you're there. And, again, if you want to lock that brake and index it, there's a little stop there that affords you the means of doing so. But, again, back to the payload. I don't think I would ever, again, take that all off to put that grate on there. When you tip this or when you tilt it, let's say you fell a tree and you had a lot of particulate and brush. Well, what I think I'm going to do is get some diamond plate to, and make a little, like a little jig or a platform that'll, that'll sit on the, the uh, oh, I don't know, what would you call it, the actual payload compartment. And I can, uh, I can use that to, uh, I don't know, maybe four by six feet. And I'll just put that right atop of the wheelbarrow itself and uh, use it in, in my different situations where it would, would be of use to me because it's going to be very busy to take all this off, that's a good word, and try to realign those bolts. And you can do it by yourself. They are locking bolts. They're square heads. They do, they're, they're caged. They won't spin. But to take that whole plastic uh, compartment off there, that payload compartment, and get into exchanging that grate, I, I don't understand that. I, I, I don't know. You, you do, you're given the grate if you get the 800. I don't think you are with the 7 or whatever the, the model is below this. Yeah, and there's those, uh, there's those four bolts. So, I don't know. Um, opinions are many. That would be mine. And, you know, man, you can, you can just move anything in this. But to take all that off... And let's examine that. There it is. Again, very well made, very, very rigid, nicely powder coated, everything great to say. But to take that all off and, and bolt that all down and then put it all back for something else. Anyway, I should suppose in your unique circumstance that may or may not be a convenient or perhaps an inconvenient thing for you in that application. But now. Nah. Anybody need a good grate for a fire pit or something? Pop a steak on? That's probably all that's ever going to see. I don't see, again, that I'm going to ever use that. And for what I'd want it for, I got a better idea with that. See, it's diamond-shaped. They call that diamond plate. I can make a nice big, say, six-foot-wide platform I can have in the barn and just lay it on there. But, yeah, overall, you can keep it. Not to... Uh, not very, uh, not very useful to me, you know. But look at it, it's always something. If the, if that's all you got, gee, it's, I'll take it. Because again, my overall impressions of the machine are very positive, uh, and and I think it's going to be uh, it's going to be very useful for me. And just like the first time I saw it, I haven't any regret. You know how you just have that feeling? Yeah, I got that feeling, and I think this is going to be a good fit for me, and maybe for you. And, you know, it's only February, so, I mean, I can't use it until, what, May or later or whatever. And when I want to scurry around here with a little need of a project, I've got the means to do it and in Cadillac style. So I'll, uh, I'll take it. So, again, overall impressions with the machine are first rate. It's very stout. It's very rigid. You get a great warranty. You got great communication when you call and you want to have that communication I talked to a gentleman named Chris there, and, man, he was just all over anything that I needed. They sent me correspondence. Here's what we're doing. Here's where the machine is. Here's when it's coming. And I just appreciated all that and more. So, yeah, it's a, it's a wonderful machine, and uh, I'm going to like it. So there it is. Thanks for watching. I'm Tom Z.